Hi everyone, I'm Imogen from Course Report, and we are a resource for researching which technology bootcamp is right for you. Our directory lists coding bootcamps, UX bootcamps, and data science bootcamps, plus we have a blog and interviews with founders, instructors, and students, all to help you work out which bootcamp you want to go to. Today, I'm speaking with Christopher, who is a student studying UX design remotely with Springboard's online program. Christopher is going to ask, answer our questions about his experience learning UX design remotely and share his screen so he can get an insight into the Springboard learning platform. So Christopher, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Cool. Well, would you like to share your screen now and, and give me a little demo of what the learning portal looks like? Sure. Let me just pause something real quick. So here is my back end when I log in and in here, I think they just did an update. So it's a little different than what I'm used to. There we go. And then in here, right here is like all of the chapters. Kind of like that's kind of how it's mentioned and you just you read through like this is just your intro when you when you first sign up and then as you go through you get each of these would not would not be grayed out and you would just click to go to the link and then once you're done you would mark it completed awesome, awesome. awesome. And um, did you kind of have like a, a kind of a checklist somewhere where you can kind of see which, which courses you've finished and which ones you still have left to do? Uh, yeah, I would, I kind of wrote down on a notepad what I needed to, like what I knew I had left so I could kind of scratch stuff out. But then when you, when you're in the middle, like in the midst of going through the course, it defaults you back to basically where you left off. So it kind of knows what you have completed and it, it brings you to like what you're, what's up next so that you don't have to um, like scroll through every time I did just because I was like, Oh, did I complete that, 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 and that. Um, but it, it kind of like if the, if this was my section that I had next, the three user centered design and thinking and design thinking, um, it would be, these would all be like live, not gray, and it would have defaulted me like here. Cool. And um, was there any way of communicating with your mentor through the learning platform? I don't, I'm not sure. I think there was, but neither of us could find it. <laughs> right. So we, sorry, we, uh, we ended up just defaulting to email and phone calls. Cool, that makes sense. Um, and I was wondering, like, were you able to submit your projects or assignments through the portal? Like, how did that work? Uh, yes. Let me find one that has a project. Um, like, here's one. So this, when I, when I got to this portion of the course, it was not grayed. And, and then the, instead of submitted, the button was like, I think it said submit project. And when you click that, a little box comes up for a link and you just paste a link in there to where you have your project hosted. I just use Google Docs for, I would say 99% of what I did. Even if I didn't do it inside of Google Docs, I would just upload it. I just had like a separate folder that I had set for sharing. Um, sharing based on link. I didn't do like sharing based on email. I just said whoever has this link can access it. And I would just copy paste that in here to the project or to the folder if I created a subfolder. And it worked perfect. Cool. Awesome. That sounds really easy. And um, what kind of programs did you use to actually build and create your projects? Um, for the initial parts where it's like submitting ideas and kind of like 
chart based stuff, I did Google Docs um, and Google Sheets. And then as we got into the more visual side of things, I used Extensio and Balsamic for that was for wireframing. Extensio lets you build um, user personas that look just look really nice. And I can show you an example of that if you want. Um, yeah, that would be cool if you can show me an example. Um, there we go. So Extensio lets you build something that really, that it's just a nice visual, quick overview of a persona that you create. They also have um, other templates in there that I used. So uh, not templates as far as people go, but like they've got, these are user personas and they also let you do empathy maps. And then from there, um, for my competitive analysis, I used the, this, that's this one right here. I used Illustrator just because I wanted it to be super simple and like, I didn't want, I don't like the way that normal spreadsheets tend to look even once you like adjust cell sizes. I was just like, no, I need this to be Illustrator. And because I use that all the time, it was a fairly fast um, project. That makes and sense. Is this your portfolio that you're showing me now? This is my case study that I did for okay. assets, mm -hmm. uh, my final, my capstone project. Oh, right. Nice. Cool. What was your capstone project? My capstone is a, uh, I did an app that is designed to allow users to catalog and keep track of their items that they have in their home or apartment for insurance purposes. So in case of fire or water damage or even robbery, you have a list of your items that you could submit to insurance for um, reimbursement checks. That's so cool. Wow. Was that an original idea you came up with yourself? Yes. Yeah. Oh, nice. Very cool. I like it. It's like a really good idea. Thank you. Cool. Um, and I was wondering kind of overall, like using the Springboard platform, how did you find that it was different from using some of the kind of free self-guided online resources that are out there? For me, it was, it was uh, um, that old, that old, feeling of like when you pay for it you feel like you need to get the value out of it so if i'm if i was just looking up youtube videos i could go down a youtube like hole and end up not learning what i wanted to learn i could just be a clicking and then watching next up in playlist and all that and this kind of like guided me down what i know i needed to learn um and or i could if with youtube i could have just like or some of the others, I could just be like, well, I don't like the way that they're teaching me, so I'm just going to move on to someone else. And eventually, that's just going to not work for me. So for this, it was like kind of a little bit of hand-holding. Like, this is, this is the steps that you need to take to fully do a user experience research for a new project or a new feature. And I liked that hand-holding. Um, I also took online classes when I was in college because that was how so, uh, some of them were only offered online. So I was like, okay, well, I'll take them there. And this was extremely better than that. Um, that one was like so dated and there were so many requirements behind it. Whereas this one was like, you do this, you, you know, you read this and go through it and then just submit a project Rather than quizzes, I like the projects because it's it's also contributing to that end capstone. Um, that's awesome. Very cool. 